Most women don't know this, but men pursue you and ultimately choose you based on a handful of questions they quietly ask and answer about you. The problem with you're not aware of what these questions are is that you probably waste a lot of time and effort on actions that don't make a big difference in his election process. So today I'm revealing the seven questions men ask themselves before reaching the point of decision that you are the one and only they want to spend the rest of their lives with. The problem not really understanding how a man think and feels is a cycle of unnecessary but repeating almost unending pain. If you're not aware of what a man of high caliber, a guy who's conscious, who's committed, who's connected, who's handsome, who has things going for himself, if you don't understand how he thinks of your energy, how he thinks of connecting with a woman of high value, and you spend a lot of energy under the wrong assumption, that typically leads to a very painful or at least a mediocre result, which then feeds into the feeling that this is harder than it needs to be and then it creates a cycle where next time you go again and go for more you're doing it from a space of this is not going to work so what i want to do today is disrupt that pattern make sure that you understand that you can change things in a heartbeat by understanding first and foremost who you are what you bring to the table and what men look for when they want a lifelong companion now i also want to invite you to go beyond the guy this isn't a video for you to contort yourself into a pretzel to make yourself be liked by men. It just so happens that when you become the strongest, most self-assured, most expressive, most light-filled version of yourself, men want that too. So think about this not as a, how do I show myself to men, but how do I show in my strongest stance so that I develop more options than I can think of and I can choose the right man for me for the rest of my life. The first question men will ask, and I've shared this in other videos, but it's important enough for me to share it again today, is the first question men ask is, how alive do I feel in her presence? That one decision, if you were to delete all the other ones, that one decision will move mountains or will stop him from going forward. The way he feels more intensely alive, which is a secret desire and goal, whether he shares it or not, is irrelevant. I'm telling you right now, because no guy will share this directly with you the way I'm sharing with you right now. He wants to feel more alive as a result of your presence. If you can do that, you're 90% ahead of the game because most people are not connected to themselves in such a way. So what does it require? It requires for you to connect to your heart, to your values, to the things that make you feel alive, that create a life force inside of you, the things that create meaning for you, the things that make you feel happy and radiant so that you're not trying hard, you're not doing the little dance for him. You're showing up and the light inside of you is so strong, it pierces through his heart and it makes him feel much more fully alive. The second quiet or hidden question men ask themselves before choosing you as their one and only, is her heart open, closed, or unsure? The answer to that question will determine how he pursues you. If your heart is open, if he feels your openness, it doesn't mean that you should reveal everything about yourself. It doesn't mean that you have to touch him in any way or be sexual with him in any way. It just means when your heart is open, that's something that a man's radar can detect a thousand miles away. If he connects, he can enter a room and feel energetically. You can do this too. Who's more open? Who's more close? Who's more full of expression? Who's more reserved? Now, this doesn't mean you have to be an extrovert. You can be an introvert and still be so fully grounded and so connected to your life force that I described. Your heart is open. Your heart is still seeking. Your heart wants more than it has right now. And it has a degree of vulnerability that allows you to go for more. Now, if your heart is closed, then that's going to make it really unlikely for him to actually pursue you. Or if he's someone who is highly avoidant, and he enjoys the type of woman who doesn't ask for more and doesn't want more, maybe he will be super compelled to pursue you because he knows if he pursues you, your heart is closed, you'll never ask more of him than he really is capable of giving. If he's unsure, again, you put yourself in a situation where 50-50, if he's going to pursue you, if he wants to connect with you or not. So the antidote to this is not to open your heart as fully as possible, but it's to open your heart 1% more than it was before and engage the interaction, engage his presence, engage the way he connects with you. And if it feels safe and if it feels consistent, then go for 1% more. The third question he's asking himself secretly is, can she see me uniquely beyond other men? 
You've connected with guys in your past that had unresolved feelings about past lovers, the ex or the exes, and they bring that degree of pain, and let's call it directly, baggage, to the next relationship. A man is going to sense also when he makes a mistake, are you reacting to his mistake or the five guys who wronged you before him? Not to make any judgments here, the more your reaction is based on the specific situation, the more you can see him for himself, the more you're not thinking he's just like every other guy, the more you can see his uniqueness, what he brings to the table, even more. The the more you can voice it out and express it, the more likely he is to find himself incredibly compelled to connect with you. Because let me tell you something, someone who can see you uniquely and voice that to you and share what the uniqueness you have that he may not even know or may have hurt peripherally, but find so refreshing in a human being, that's going to be a key component in him feeling really excited, really compelled, really inspired to pursue you and to find you the one and only. Question number four, does she value herself? Another way of asking this is, does she feel confident in what she brings to the table? Another way of asking this is, does she have standards? Does she have boundaries? Is she able to say, no thanks? Is she able to say, here's what I need to move forward? Is she able to say, absolutely not? Is she able to walk away if need be, regardless of the connection, because she finds that the worth and the love that she has for herself is more important than any connection with any human being. So the way you show up, the standards you have for physical touch, the standards you have for sexual connection, the standards you have for going on a date last minute. Sometimes it's spontaneous and fun. Sometimes it's the booty call. I mean, the more clear you are as to not, you are wrong for asking me at this hour of the night, but hey, you know what? I'm not good at last minute invites at 11 o'clock at night on a Friday, but I'm curious and open to connect with you later on if you plan it a little bit more in advance. Something of that nature. Now, before I share my last three points, which will be very meaningful in your ability to create the connection you want, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware. I'm not aware at all, perhaps, of the root cause why you're still single. Not the symptom, the root cause. What I've done is I've taken 13 years of being on the trenches, helping women of all walks of life, every continent on this earth, and showing them ways that don't require gimmicks to connect with men and create life partnerships. And what I've done is I put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question of why you're still single, and a custom report based on your specific blind spot, that will share with you the number one action you can take starting today to attract the guy you want in a small fraction of the time. Fifth quiet question every man will decide before saying, yes, I'm in this or oh, I'm out is, does she request or complain? Okay, this is a big one because it's a philosophy of life. It's not only does she usually ask kind requests versus tell me what I'm doing wrong, but it's an attitude in the way you present, the way you view life, the way you say what's right and what's wrong. So if you have a request is, hey, I really thrive when a guy asks me out at least a couple of days in advance. Would you mind doing that next time so I can make sure because I really want to see you that I can see you? That's a request. It's a kind request. It's an elegant request. Here's a complaint. You asked me the last minute. I can't believe you did that. Complaint, criticism. I mean, you're saying the same thing in essence, but one is much more elevated. One is much more high value because one, forget men, is going to get you much more of what you want in life. So when you connect with men, are you asking for what you want and need instead of coming at an angle of saying this is wrong, you did wrong, or worse, you are wrong? Sixth question men will ask for deciding on you is, does she seek accompanied independence or interdependence? And there's a big difference. Accompanied independence means I do my thing when I want, with whom I want. If you're around me, it's cool. If you can join me, that's great. But this is the way I am. And I'm not looking for a true partnership. Interdependence means give and take. Interdependence means I'm going to connect with someone who is seeking to have an influence of my life into her life, an influence of my words, my actions, my value into her life. She can do things for herself, but she enjoys when I do them for her. And instead of saying, no, I open my own door, she allows to say, hey, you know what? I can open it. I'm strong enough to do it, but it's okay if you do it for me. That stance of vulnerability, of femininity, of saying, my heart is open to getting and receiving from you what you have to offer is incredibly inspiring for men. Which leads me to my last point. Is she inspiring or pushing? There's two ways to get people to do things. One is to push them cajole them, manipulate them, guilt them into doing things. The other one is to say, here's what I bring to the table. Here's what the future looked like. I'm going there. Will you join me? Yes or no. If you're not joining me, I'm still going there. That type of I'm going there anyways 
is such an inspired thing for a man versus I'm pulling teeth right now with you. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. If it is, it means the world to me. You have no idea how much this means to me. If you click like and subscribe to my channel, this is how we can reach more women and help them get what they want in love. If you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.